Hello, happy people. So, ignore the flapping head before you and listen to the flapping head that you can't really see. The flapping head in front of you is going to tell you some long, drawn out story about why he couldn't do this video for over a month. I filmed this video November 7th, which was during the time of the election and everything. And that's part of the reason why it took me so long, because as you all know, that was a long week of a process. But another part of it was just that I had been doing videos at this point for a full month weekly, which was a lot more complicated than it seemed because the editing process and everything and the learning, it was a slippery slope. So I took a month off to just kind of get my bearings with what the election state and what the world was going to be for the next coming year and just kind of figuring out how to do different things with my editing, getting more used to voiceover, which I have gotten more comfortable with, and just overall kind of getting the bearings to my channel. Uh, again, I explain that more in my video for the uh, joys of mental health, which you can see here. But in summary, it was just a long eight minutes of me talking about like why it took so long, but it seems easier to just explain it to you like this in here. That's pretty much the whole reason why. Also pictures. I took like 500 pictures at the Renaissance Festival. And when I actually compiled that with the video, I basically only had like two minutes of video as opposed to a lot of pictures. So I just had to figure out how to reformat this particular video since it's going to be more pictures than video and more voiceover than anything, which is something you can learn from my joys of fashion video was very daunting for me to figure out at first. But yeah, all of that long drawn out story put aside now. Here's the intro so you can get to the video so we can get to the joys of the Renaissance Festival, which has taken me over a month to film. So sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the lovely Renaissance Festival. Ours takes place in Hammond, Louisiana. So in case you're wondering where this particular festival is, that's where it is. But just look how beautiful the surroundings was. It's very nice. It's very naturey and it was full of lots of life and people. They did have mass restrictions, but despite that, they still had people coming out dressed to the nines with their coolest fashions, which takes me to the first joy, the fashions. They had lots of options for people to choose from. They had people dressed in full decked out armor. They had some witch doctors. They even had people that were kind of dressed in other eras, but they were all welcome here at the Renaissance Festival, which made the fashions kind of fun. There were people that were dressed in regular, fancy aristocrat garbs like these people here. And that also brings me to the 1.2 part of the joy because you can't wear the fashions without the people. So the people and the fashions kind of go hand in hand and they definitely made that a big and wonderful part of the Renaissance Festival. They had some wood nymphs like these girls mixed in with some regular flannel shirts. They had some fairy girls like this one, and you even had other options like I said before, like this really cool steampunk hat that this lady had on that wasn't really with the times, but it's still very much welcomed here. I even had my own hat, which you can see here. Don't you love it? Isn't it so chic and fashionable? It was something. My friend got it for me. But you could also be a witch cloaked in mystery like this, whoever they were, were. <laughs> you could also be a wizard like this guy who looks like he came straight out of Lord of the Rings. You could also even be a plague doctor like this guy. He looked like he was having fun. He looked really chic with his boots and stuff. They also had a girl version of him, which I thought was really cool, too. Um, they also had this lady. She was a barbarian, I think, or something of that ilk. They also had this lady with the cool pimp stick. I saw a lot of her, and I guess this guy was like her bodyguard or something. But they also had other options like this guy who's like a bar patron, and this guy with the fancy boots. This was one of my all-time favorite like outfits and pictures. This girl looks like somebody out of Lord of the Rings, like she's going to fight a dragon. And speaking of fire tamers, that's another joy. They had this girl who was doing some really cool fire dancing along the way, and I'll let you see a little clip of it right now.
wasn't that fun. Now we get into more of the picture side of things. I actually was able to get a lot of pictures, like I said before, of her doing her fire act. And what I really, really loved was when I went into uh, action mode, I was able to get a lot of really cool detail in the fire that she was playing with, which was really, really fun. So if you're ever working with somebody in motion, if you don't have a really, really high uh, shutter priority, then the next best thing to do is just to go to your action mode setting. Most cameras do have that, and it makes it a little bit easier in like snap, um, how do you say, um, really quick pictures that you need to get on the fly. Because um, after I did the video, I decided I wanted to do pictures, so I had to hurry up and switch modes. So I just went with the action mode just to make things easier. This guy was having fun too with it. That was her drummer guy. And then later on, she was eating fire too, as you can see, which again, added so much coolness to it. I wouldn't do that, but she was a G, so really big ups to her and to the guy for making his music. He was really jamming with the bongos over there. Another really cool show that we got to see along the way was Glass Blowing, which is another joy of this. Um, it was really cool to see, and it was really cool in execution, and I liked how he talked, too. I'll give you a little snippet of it. And since it is so hot, once I've got it stretched out a little bit, I can just cut it right off. Then I'm going to get a hold of the end of it, kind of give it a little wiggle and a waggle and a pull, and I flip it down and around, and I just stick it back down again. Now, I like my handles to be very well attached, so I'm going to weld it on there. I'm going to take my little baby dragon and squeeze the dragon. It likes it, you know, and gives you fire. Little wiggle and a waggle. <laughs> I thought he was really funny, and he was really uh, a good teacher and really calm. He asked a lot of questions to people in the audience, and people actually had some really good questions to answer for him. And he kind of did the sort of teacher thing where it's like, what do you think the answer is to this? And then some people would <laughs> initially put out a bunch of wrong answers, but he'd be like, no, come on, you can do it. And eventually people didn't get it. So it was really fun. It was really interesting getting to learn how to do some glass blowing. I also liked how he called it a little baby dragon too, <laughs> even though a lot of the instruments he was using wasn't very, uh, of the times, but still, it was really cool to learn how to do this glass blowing along the way. And also we got to see how he made little jars too, like this one. They also had little shavings on the floor after he clipped these things off with these metal scissors, which I thought was really cool. And yeah, there they are. And that was the glass blowing, which is really fun. Again, so I recommend it anyway. After that, my friends and I went to go and see the jousting match. But unfortunately, we were either too late or too early for it, so it wasn't happening when we got there. But not to worry, because we still got to see some really cool wildlife. And on that wildlife note, that takes me to our next joy, which is brought to you by this lovely lady and her owl. I don't know what this owl's name was, but he's part of the joy, along with the wildlife. We also got to learn one of the other owl's name from the show that we got to see. Also, listen for the cute owl noises. Inside and it's called the Cats and Doors program and we support them as well. Now, Sir Peter's brought out our lovely six, no, he's 17 years old now, our barred owl whose name is Norton. Hello, Norton. Did you hear the noises? It was like, ah, ah. <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun. Also, I think Sir Patrick was asleep during this thing. I can't tell. He looked pretty asleep to me. I think he was asleep, but at least the owl was awake, I think. Maybe he wasn't actually awake. But the show was interesting to me. Antonina and Jason, look at them watching the show, taking in the owl knowledge. <laughs> anyway, after that, I got tortured a little bit in this locked up chamber. But then after I was done getting locked up, we went to go and check out the rest of the torture chamber, which is a joy, I guess. Not actually the torture itself, but you know, just getting to see how people lived back then. It's not fun for them, but, you know, it's interesting for us in the future, like the dragon and the gargoyle with somebody in his mouth, and then this creepy guy. But yeah, here's some guy getting his head chopped off, much like, you know, Game of Thrones style. Here's an uncomfortable chair. Here's another uncomfortable chair. And here's Wesley getting tortured himself. It was pretty fun and pretty quick, but I still recommend it just because it's interesting, if nothing else. But on the other hand, if you're not a fan of torture, you could try something with a bit more substance, like dancing, which they had lots of here. Bye. Uh -huh. 
weren't those dancers getting it? And they're part of what makes the world so big and vast, along with the other people who help build the world into something really believable. Which brings me into my next joy of the Renaissance Festival, the world itself. From the people in their costumes, the people in the way they are talk, it really felt like very authentic to the times in most occasions. Obviously, there were times where they had regular people walking around, regular clothes, smoking their cigarettes. But if you could ignore that part, it's really fun and interesting, especially like when you have friends along with you to enjoy, which is another joy. <laughs> Friends are a big part of what made the Renaissance Festival so fun for me, and it was because of my friends that I even found out about the festival and brought new friends to it. Unfortunately, I didn't think to get many pictures of us all together as a group, but you know, I still got pictures of us sporadically scattered throughout, so you still get to enjoy it with us. Also, I felt bad for this guy who was taking tomatoes to the head pretty regularly. Basically, it was his job to insult people that threw tomatoes at him, but only if you chose to throw tomatoes at him, which I would never choose to do because that just seems kind of mean. But, you know, it's thanks to people like him and the others that the world felt realistic. So that's definitely another big joy because the fair workers were the whole reason why this fair was realistic, enjoyable, and so fun. So it's a big part of why I personally would recommend the festival to you. It's fun for the whole family. The workers there are really dedicated, and I have fun and have had fun for the last three years of going. So if you need a thought on what to do for fun, that's a thought for you. Also, I really hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. And it should also be noted that I am actually doing this voiceover on my birthday, December 15th. So as you're hearing this, I'm doing it on my birthday. So I hope you enjoy it even more because I couldn't think of any better way to end off my birthday than just kind of sharing some memories with you guys and doing one of my first YouTube videos where I actually get to incorporate my photography too. It was really, really fun for me. Though, again, it was a tough challenge. I actually got better the more I did it. So like with most things, practice makes perfect. So if anything, you find really hard to do, just try giving it some practice. You might enjoy it more in the end. So happy birthday to me, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.